Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, online community. It's good to be with you. Um, I do know we've got, we've got a few people that's even been in our house this week that are just struggling with whatever is floating around, some maybe allergies, maybe just um, spring, you know, whatever. Um, or, you know, remember when people used to just get colds? It could just be that, too. And so um, we want to just take a moment. I, I, as we open up with prayer, um, I want to greet those. If that's you and you're struggling in any way, we want to just uh, pray for you. Um, and also just pray that the Lord would just continue to be glorified and that he would speak. So would you just join me in prayer as we open up this portion of our service? Heavenly Father, I'm so grateful that you are glorious and great, that you are above all things, God, that nothing surprises you. Lord, even when we're caught off guard by the, the unexpected, maybe it's uh, the health things, maybe it's the health things of others or those that we love, or maybe it's just the unexpected loss. God, I pray that you would just be glorified in all things, but that we would be able in these moments to turn our eyes and our ears towards you. God, I pray that you would be the healer in a real and tangible way to us today. God, whether we're, we're struggling physically and we need a, a healing, maybe even a miraculous healing that only you can provide. Oh God, even the, the mundane healings, the things that we see as small and insignificant and our bodies can get over, God, you're still the healer in those things. So Jesus, remind us that the power that you possess to be Jesus, our healer today. God, for those that are struggling emotionally, Lord God, they're wrestling with things, the anxiety, the fear, the depression, whatever it is, God, I pray that you would just show us the way, show us your way, God, your truth, Lord, in the life that comes only through you. Lord, we give you this time. I pray that your, your words would just resonate with all of us today, all those that would hear, God, that it would, it would be your words, or that they would, they would go out as seeds in the, the very souls of, of who we are, Lord, and they would take root, and they would flourish into something new. We thank you, Jesus, for what it is that you're doing here among us and in us and God, I pray through us. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. 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 Well, good morning. If you have your Bibles today, you can go to John 14. That's where we're going to be primarily today. If you do not have a Bible uh, and would like one, we would love to gift you one. If you could see one of our team, the prayer teams, or any leadership wearing the badges, uh, we would love to gift that to you. And uh, if you don't have it, that's okay. We'll have it on the screens. And if all else fails, I still read it, right? So there is that. Uh, if you are just joining us today, we are in a series titled Jesus in 3D. This is our Easter series, and we talked a little bit about what that means. We're talking about 3D. You all know what 3D is, right? <laughs> Somebody said amen to that. I, <laughs> okay, so they really like 3D movies maybe, right? like things that just jump out, and we're, we're basically taking time throughout this month to focus on some of the, the I am statements that Jesus proclaimed and made in the book of John, and that when he was speaking these words to those who were hearing them for the very first time, these would have resonated much like 3D for us. They would have stood out as larger than life, and yet they would have been so practical especially when we look at these things. They're some of the, the, the most rich sayings that we have in the Bible. And Jesus was a master teacher. He really was. Like, he knew his audience, and he knew his audience, even those that weren't hearing it for the first time, but us, thousands of years later, who would be hearing it, and how we would continue to unpack that, and how that applies and lives out in our own waking lives practically. And so that's where we're, we're going. Um, I want to show you just a, a couple of, of illustrations, though, because we're today that, that go with kind of what we're talking about here. Um, and this is actually, if we have that first one, can we put that on the screen? This is, this is from a book called With by an author named Sky Jathani. I, I can't um, recommend that book enough if you're wanting to grow in your relationship with God and, and looking at things practically. But, but really, he comes from a perspective of going, so when it comes to the religions of the world, there's this kind of underlying theme, and this is what maybe those who don't ascribe to any kind of religion would say is that all, all roads, all religions lead to God, right? And so we, we would look at this and we'd go, okay, the, 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 
the religions, it doesn't matter where I start, eventually we're going to end up to God and, and we're all going to be good and we're all going to be in heaven and everything is going to be just fine. Now that's maybe a worldly, secular perspective, right? However, you can see this within the church sometimes. Maybe it's the, the rounding of the edges or it's maybe I don't want to say too much or I don't want to speak too much truth because I need to be about more grace or maybe it's just the other way around, right? We're going to be all truth and no grace. And what we actually get is maybe something more that looks like this. It's more of an inverted mountain, right? That, that we would say all these religions, they, they maybe start in a good place, and maybe even some, some people who would claim to be followers of Jesus Christ would say they start in one spot, but they don't allow the process of the, I will make you into fishers of men, as the discipleship process, and then they start at one spot, and they end up very, very far away from who God is. Jesus addresses this in one of his, his pretty well-known I am statements. And we're going to start with that today. It's in John 14, verse 6. It says this, Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So this is our I am statement for today. I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. Now, I got I to gotta take just a couple of steps back here before we really begin to unpack this and, and give you a little bit of context of, of where we see this I am statement, because context is everything, isn't it? Right? Like, you got to know where this is coming from. Otherwise, we'll, we'll be kind of like the mountain upside down going all over the place and starting in a good spot, but really ending not where we're supposed to be. So if you go two chapters before this, you have what's called the triumphal entry. This is where we get Palm Sunday from. Do you realize that's what today is? Today is Palm Sunday. It's, it's, it's the start of Holy Week. We're heading into what would be Jesus' uh, last week and, and final hours before his, his crucifixion and then ultimately, holla, spoiler alert, resurrection. Just giving you a little heads up what's coming next week. It's coming. It's coming. Right, so that, that has happened. He has come in. People are, they're basically the fans of Jesus because that's what they were. It's the same people that will be turning on him very shortly, right? But they're the fans, they're, they're screaming, they're like, Jesus is here, woo, Hosanna in the highest. They're throwing down the palms, everything, they're worshiping him. He's riding on a donkey and it's a good celebratory party. That's Palm Sunday. And then what we see in the next chapter in John 13 is really the beginning of what uh, many would consider the, the farewell discourse of Jesus. He's, um, he's speaking to his disciples about his departure. And he's done this several times throughout, uh, throughout Scripture. As long as he's with them, he's talking about, listen, I'm here now, but I'm not going to be. And it's almost as if when we see the reaction of the disciples here, it's almost as if they don't believe him. It's like, oh, that's that one thing that Jesus says right? But like, he's always there, right? Like, it's, it's, it's okay. But he's been kind of prepping them for this. And he's essentially having the very last Passover supper that he would have with his disciples. And we see it's a beautiful chapter. And I would almost say, hey, take and go and read this. This is your homework next week before we enter into even Good Friday services that he's taken time with his disciples. He's washed their feet, pretty much blown their minds with that. In a sense, he's showing them true love and serving them. And he's broken bread with them. And then he, well, then it gets a little awkward. I'll just be honest, right? He, he essentially drops a bomb in the middle of, of, of dinner, right? He's like, oh, by the way, Judas, you're going to betray me. Peter, you're going to deny me, and I'm out. <laughs> he, you ever been in one of those like awkward family dinners where like things seem, things seem to be going well, right? Maybe even celebratory, and then somebody says one thing, and it's like, oh, this party just died. Anybody? It's like, no? Thanksgiving? Hello? Anyone? <laughs> Christmas? Good Friday? I, I don't know, Right? Like, like you've, you've, we've, all, we've all experienced that. It doesn't have to be family. It can be with friends. And you're just like, all of a sudden, like, this, this, did, this did not go the way I thought it was going to go. Right? 
We've all had that experience. That's what, that's what we get leading into where we're going in John 14. Is you could almost sense just this shock, this grappling with what just happened, right? Like a disciple who had been with them from the very beginning, who maybe you thought, ah, he's kind of sideways a little bit, but he's all right. Judas is fine. Like, no, he's not, he's not on our team anymore. And so he's gone. And then Peter, like one of Jesus' like main three, all of a sudden he's like, he's going to deny him too. What is going on here? There's a lot of like, and now Jesus is saying, I'm, I'm gone. I'm going. And it's just this, you could sense just this sorrow. And Jesus then, as we open up John 14, speaks these words to comfort them. Look at this, if you've got your, got your finger there on verse 1. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. Now that's, that's critical. We're going to come back to that in just a minute. Verse 2, in my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you that I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will take you to myself that where I am, you may be also. I want to pause there for a second because I know I, I've used this passage and even as recent as this past week, uh, have heard this passage in funerals, especially those, of, those that we know that were followers of Jesus Christ, that they, they understood who Jesus was, that he was the savior of their souls. And so because of that, they had a new hope that was tethered into a space that they could not see here on earth. Right? That's an eternity with God. Right? This, this is where that comes from. Jesus is saying, believe in me. Believe, trust me that what I say is truth. And here's what's coming for you, is that you will never be apart from me. That was the amen moment. Right? You'll never be apart. That's the truth. It's what we can bank on. So Jesus is, is speaking this life to this, let's just be honest, dead, awkward silence in the room. And he's saying, let me, let me just point right to where we need to go. Then he continues on, verse 4, and you know the way to where I'm going. Thomas, verse 5, said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus, verse 6, said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life and no one comes to the Father except through me. I've titled today's message, if you're taking notes, uh, Follow the Yellow Brick Road. Now, now give me a second here, all right? Some of you are like, wait a second, what? Can we speak this in church? We, we're all familiar with The Wizard of Oz, yes? Right? Like, I, I can't even feel like I'm not even giving spoiler warnings to a movie that's like 80 years old, Right? We, we, we understand the Wizard of Oz, the story. And to kind of set it up, if you're unfamiliar, I'll just, I'll just help a little bit, right? Dorothy, that's our, that's our protagonist. She is sent by a tornado from where? Kansas, because we're not in Kansas anymore, right? To Oz. And she just wants to go home. But how does she get there? She's got to go see who? The Wizard, the Wizard of Oz right? And it, what is she instructed to follow to get there? The yellow brick. Look, look at this, guys. We're, we're doing this together. Isn't that great? This is great. Not unlike Dorothy, or maybe a lot like Dorothy, we're all trying to get home. Some of us don't even know what that means. Some of us, we think we do, but we've inverted the mountain. And we're going, we're going someplace else. And yet we all seek a place of comfort, of refuge, and honestly, a source of hope. And when Jesus makes this I am statement, he is speaking a very declaration, yet a very simple presentation of what it means to be one of his followers. And that Jesus is the only way to God. Jesus is the only source of truth. And Jesus is the only source of life. What, is, what does that mean? 
Because here's the thing, this, this simple declaration is not just a, a set of beliefs or principles for us to download and just think and have in the back of our mind, but it actually should be the very way in which we live. And especially as we follow Jesus, the path, the way. It should change everything. It should change everything. Thank you, Daryl. So if you're taking notes, let's, let's, let's break this down. Okay, so let's first look at Jesus, the way. Jesus, the way. The very first thing that Jesus addresses is, I believe, one of the very questions, maybe we don't even realize that we're asking, but we ask every day when we get up, and that is, where am I going? Where am I going? Now, now for some, maybe it's a very literal, what day is this? Where am I going? <laughs> right? I, it's been one of those weeks for me too, right? I'm like, this is Thursday, okay, right, right? But for some of us, it, it is more abstract. It's that bigger, larger, like, where am I going? What am I, what am I actually doing <laughs> with my life? Where, where am I going? Let's look back at the passage we just read, John 14. We'll start again with verse four. And you know, this is Jesus, and you know the way to where I'm going. Now, I, can I just say I love Thomas? I, I think I've said this before, but he's, he's probably my favorite. I'll just be, I'll just be honest because uh, whenever Thomas doesn't understand something, he's not doubting. He's trying to get clarification. And here's the thing I love about Jesus. He knows Thomas pretty well. And he's not like, Thomas, again, really? How many times are you going to ask me? No, he's, he's patient. He's gentle. And he's like... Oh, here it is. And so, so understand, remember the vibe in the room, right? They're grappling with what's going on. And so Thomas is doing what all of us, may, well, maybe not all of us, but some of us, and when something is going out of control, we're like, I've got, I've got to figure out. I've got to find answers. Got to, okay, Jesus, Jesus help, right? Look, verse five, Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And this is when Jesus responds, I am the way. I am the way. See, here's what Jesus is trying to do. Because the disciples, they're looking for something tangible, something practical, perhaps maybe even literal, the yellow brick road. Right? They're, they're, they're looking for that. Like, okay, God, uh, Jesus, t- tell me, t- what am I supposed to do? Right? But Jesus is doing something interesting by speaking a bit more abstractly here. And he's preparing them to walk by faith. Because think about it. Up until this point, Jesus has been with them. They can see everything. They can see his power at work. They can see him moving in the hearts and changing lives. And when you're following somebody and all of a sudden they're saying they're going to be gone. And Jesus is saying, follow me but follow me as the way, even when I'm, I'm not physically with you. And I think that's, that's something that maybe we, we can forget in a pinch, right? It's the whole faith being something that is without sight, without understanding, maybe even without clear direction, and yet Jesus still says go. He still says follow. Continue on, verse four, or excuse me, in chapter 14, verse 7. If you had known me, you would have known my father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. So we got to pause here because this is, this, is, this is important. When Jesus is talking about know, when we look at even the, the original translation, this is not like the knowledge of, right? Think of your favorite celebrity, you know, all, or your favorite sports person. I'll just go that realm. I think I've hit everybody. Or your favorite hunter or fisher men. Did we get everyone, perhaps? Someone that you admire. You can know everything about them, right? But you don't, you don't actually know them, right? Jesus is saying, you don't know of God. You know God because you know me. You know, you've been with me. You have that relationship. That's important. Verse 8, Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and it is enough for us. 
Jesus, now maybe he's starting to get a little, little testy. All right, let's just be right. Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Like, uh, me, it's me, right? Get it? You know, you know me, so you know my Father. He's, he's trying to... to reassure them. Listen, I am the way. I'm the one you know. You want to go to the Father? Go through me, your relationship with me. Follow after me, even when I am not here with you. Because we'll see when we fast forward just a little bit, Jesus is going to leave someone, a helper, an advocate that will rest and dwell with inside the believers, the followers of Jesus, the Holy Spirit, is always with you. Always with you. That's a little bit of a spoiler alert. We'll get there. Not this week, though. See, the disciples are thinking in terms of facts while he was speaking in terms of faith. See, the way to God, the Father, who is in heaven, is not just the knowledge of, of the facts. It's not just knowing Scripture. It's not just having a good regiment or disciplines in my life of I make sure I pray before I eat. I, I'm really kind to people. I'm at church almost every week, almost maybe. I mean, it's not a list of things. That's knowledge of. The way to the Father in heaven is through Jesus. It's through knowing Jesus, not knowing of or what he can do or what uh, might be better if, but it's actually knowing Jesus Christ Personally, I, I heard a story years ago about this, uh, this missionary who was, who was going to really minister to a remote village, and that to get there, they had to go through this, this deep jungle, and there was a local guide who was going to assist and, and take this missionary to uh, this village deep within the jungle, and they, they started out on the path and it was, it was clear, you could see where you were going, and then the deeper that they got into the jungle, they would walk through, and that the, the guide started doing what you would expect. He pulls out his machete and starts hacking off the, the leaves and the brush to clear the way to get through, and the deeper they got into the jungle, the closer to the village, the more that the path was actually disappearing, and got to a point where the missionary was like, starting to get a little nervous, Right, I'm following this guide, and all of a sudden the path has disappeared, and it got to the point where was, there was no visible sign of a path, no visible sign of a way. And the missionary looks, you know, yells at the guide who's hacking things down, moving through the brush, and goes, uh, "Where are we going? <laughs> because there, there is no path any longer." To which the guide turned to him and said, "I am the path." I am the one you follow. I know where I'm going. And every time I think of that story, I think of, I think of Jesus as the way. And that there's, there's so much we don't understand, right? There's so much that we walk through that, that just doesn't make sense. Or we start to look around and we, we get to a point where like, uh, right? When Jesus says, I am the way, follow me, that's it. He is the path. See, if you know Jesus, then you know the way. And this is the difference between the works, the good behavior, the doing things the way I think they should be done versus actually knowing Jesus. That's how he becomes the way. That's how he becomes the direction. So then look ahead. Jesus then the way, now Jesus then the truth. See, last week we talked about Jesus as our light, and he reveals the truth because he is the truth. So if his declaration of being the way answers the where question, his declaration of being the truth answers the why question, which we love to ask that question, yeah? Why? Why'd that happen? Why are you doing that? Why, Jesus, why? Right? We see in John 1, jump out of John 14 for a second, John 1, 14 says, The word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as only the Son of, 
from the Father. Look at this, full of grace and truth. This is, this is a difficult thing for us to understand because we are a people of extremes, are we not? We just are. Whether you are or aren't or would even disagree with that, that's an extreme. So I'm just going to throw that out there just for a second here. But we, we have a tendency to, to look at this as all truth, right? It's all truth, which really, you know, comes from a place of judgment and it's, it's you know, it's what's not right or it's the high standards or it's the things that, that I can't attain or I can't attain myself, but I certainly want to project on other people, right? Because they should be doing better. It, it's all truth. Or you reject that and you go all grace, right? Like, it's all good. It's all good, man. Whatever. Do whatever. Be you. Do whatever makes you feel good and all that. You can't tell me what to do. You can't certainly define me. No, that's, that's being judgy. We don't want that. And so we take these two schools of thought into Jesus being portrayed and actually living out being truth and grace. But not just one over the other, but actually the balanced approach of being truth and grace. I would say a perfect balance because through his truth, he lights up our darkness and the things that don't align with that truth, yet he still offers us grace. He still says, um, yeah, we can do better than that. So he calls us out of it. It's not a hand out, it's a hand up. Let me pull you up out of that. There's, there's, there are things that are just better for you. If you would just follow after me. John 8, verse 31, 32. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. Verse 32, and you will know the truth, right? Because Jesus is truth. But look at this. And the truth will set you free. The grace, the mercy. So you know me. We just talked about that. You will know truth. And therefore you will know that the way that I'm doing things is not the best way. It doesn't align with his truth, and therefore I need his grace to move on out of that. So follow my way, and I will show you what's true. And through my grace, I will call you out into freedom. It's true liberty. Not this, you know, just everything goes, but actually like walking in grace. And that I'm, I'm not bound to what I was before. This is the thing. This is how you can tell someone is walking the way because they recognize the truth and it changes everything. The life change comes not because you're trying to earn that grace, but because you recognize that you got it unmerited, as we heard earlier, right? Nothing that I could do. And therefore now it changes everything. So Jesus, as the way, brings the truth. And as we see here, it gives us life. It gives us life. This is Jesus, our last point. Jesus, the life. See, the life answers the, the how question. Like, what, now what do we do? How do we move on from here? So John 14, let's finish this out. Verse 10, do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Verse 11, believe. There's that word again. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or else believe on account of the works themselves. Believe. Believe. Trust. See, here's the real thing about sin. It's not just the, the being bad or doing wrong things, but it actually literally translates to death. It is separation from God. And so when we say, as we'll see in a few weeks, abiding in the vine, when I'm separated from that, I can't have life, right? Anytime I cut off something off the branch, it, it's dead. It might live a little bit, but it's soon going to be what? Firewood. <laughs> Dead too. That's fine. It's harder to burn things that are alive, right? The, like it's too green, it's too wet, right? 
separation. Our sin separates us from God. Jesus comes in to, to rise up, to fill the gap, to be the bridge, to provide that life, new life. Here's the thing. We, we're still of sin nature, right? Like it's kind of one of those things that when Jesus says, go and sin no more, I had somebody say, uh, isn't that the impossible question? I was like, yeah, it kind of is, right? But this is the great thing is that God's grace through his son is renewed. And so therefore, when I'm living from grace, it means I, I, I follow Jesus into a new way of living. It's the constant refining. It's that constant shaping. See, sin is not sin because it's bad. It's, I say this all the time. It's just not helpful. <laughs> it's just not helpful. It's destructive, right? It may feel good for a little bit, right? I mean, let's be real, but it'll jack you up. Yeah, oh yeah. There's an amen on that one. Right? But it keeps me living, constant seeking more, trying to fill that space, or I'm I'm fighting the, the shame and the guilt, or I'm I'm living with this worry and the fear and the doubts, and they, they start to drive everything that I do. And I can't see past what I can see. I've defined my own truth, and therefore I'm so far off. Jesus, follow me. I'm the way, I'm the truth, the truth that you need. Maybe not always what you want to hear, but I'm the truth that you need. So that you may actually have life and life to the full. And and not here, listen to this, not just here, but eternally. That when this is done, I'm not done, right? I'm not done. I continue on in the presence of my Savior for eternity. Why wouldn't you want that? Why would we reject that? Jesus says today, believe. Know me. Know me. Know me. Allow my truth to actually wash over you, not in a way of judgment or that you you don't measure up, but in a way that actually restores, that makes you whole. It gives you something new and fresh to follow beyond what I can make up, because even on my best day, it's still not good enough. It's still not good enough. So therefore, follow him into life. When we trust in Jesus, when we believe, trust means believe, right? When we believe in Jesus, we recognize he's the only way to God. He is the final source of truth, and he is the only source of life. And everything else, not good enough. And yet Jesus calls us out into following after him. Will you just um, take a moment with me and just respond? Because like I mentioned before, we're all trying to get home. I don't know anyone, regardless of their faith background, that doesn't want to go to heaven. I, I don't know. I don't know one. I haven't met one, Right? Or maybe what we think heaven is. But let me be clear. If we don't know Jesus, we will never know. We will never know heaven. We will never know an eternity. And I want to be careful here because I don't want to get, I don't want to play to the fear aspect of it. Because fear can be a good motivator. But only for a little bit. Because at some point within our own hearts, we start to get over fear. Oh, maybe I don't. Maybe that, eh, that, that's not really right. So hear this. This isn't from a perspective of, hey, turn or burn, right? That's not what this is. That's a, would you like to know a better way? Would you like to actually have a life that feels like even though everything might be falling apart around me, like there's still some stability, there's still some some hope. Yeah. So what are we following today? 
And so real simply, I think, you know, maybe we need to, if we've said that we've been following him, but, and only you would know this. This isn't judgment. But you don't really know Jesus. He sounds good. He sounds good in the lives of other people, but I don't know what that is. Or maybe you've never, and you're here today, or you're listening right now. <laughs> that, that invitation that Jesus makes is still good. It's still there and available. And he says, follow me, follow me. I am the way. I can show you truth. I can give you life. And I can give you life even beyond this life. All we have to do is believe. What does that mean? Jesus, I believe you are my Lord and Savior, that through your, your death and resurrection, you overcame sin so that as I believe in you, you can give me new life. So just wherever you're at, just if you would just posture yourselves in a way of you feel most appropriate to respond, whether it's closing your eyes, with bowing your heads. In a moment, I'm gonna, we're going to invite our prayer teams to come forward if you want to receive prayer. But Jesus, we respond today. We recognize that we aren't enough. We don't have what it takes to separate ourselves from your, our sins. We can't just experience communion with you and the Father on our own, but that we need, we need you. You are the way. So Jesus, today we make you our path. We proclaim that you are the one that has set us free from our sins. That only through you do we come into communion with the Father. But that you don't leave us there. You don't leave us in our, our shame, our guilt. You remove that and you call us into new life. You speak transformation over our souls, our very souls. And therefore, it just comes out as something new, a completely new creation, not fixed, but made new. Jesus, thank you for that promise. Jesus, we commit to follow you even when it's hard. Even when those that would, would say that we're foolish. God, you make, you make fools the wise. And so thank you, Jesus, for all that you're doing. Give us the boldness, the courage to change for you, to step out in faith and be transformed by your truth and experience new life. We are nothing apart from you. And so Jesus, I pray you be glorified in the lives of each and every one of us. And Lord, within your church, that we would shine your light, that would point back to your grace, that would lead to new life for others. We praise you, Jesus. It's in your name that we pray. Amen.